morning. Joining us is Heather McTeer Tony. She is a climate justin liaison and environmental defense fund and senior advisor to Moms Clean Air Force. Good morning. How are you doing? And thank you so much for joining us this morning on News Now from Fox. I believe your microphone might be muted on Zoom. <laughs> There Thanks you so. are. Good morning. Good morning, Regina. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yes, it's wonderful to be here. Thanks so much for having me. All right. So we really want to talk about can the chem tool fire have long lasting impacts on the local environment? You know, first, let me say I'm, I'm just very I, I want to say thank you to all of the, the emergency responders. You know, this is not an easy type of incident, and it's so unfortunate when we see this type of chemical fire take place anywhere in the country. And to understand whether or not they're going to be long term effects, how it will impact the community, uh, children, senior citizens, sensitive people to any type of uh, emissions is one of the important things that has to be discussed throughout this process. So as they are looking um, and doing air monitoring, understanding truly what has been ex what the community has been exposed to, uh, we will understand uh, what will be those long term effects. But what I can tell you is that, you know, across this country, as we have seen more and more of these types of fires, particularly in areas where that are fraught with uh, chemical plants, uh, the Gulf Coast region, for example, we see more and more long term effects that come down the road in terms of in terms of the ways that people are experiencing these latter effects of uh, chemical disasters and what they have taken in. And, you know, it's something that we definitely have to understand um, is, is, is going to be a part of this for a long time to come. There's no overnight answer. Yeah, so far, Illinois EPA is investigating the use of fluorinated firefighting foam, which can cause adverse human health effects in fighting the chem tool fire in Rockton. But we've been listening in on all these news conferences. They're saying so far, air quality is good. Water quality at a nearby river is good. How often should they be testing? You know, with the local communities working together with the um, state EPA and, of course, with Region 5 EPA, it's important for everybody to be consistent and to test early and often. And so uh, from the press conference that I listened to and, and news reports, they're going to be doing this for a while. But, you know, I have to stress that what we're seeing in Rockton right now is not what happens across the rest of the United States on a regular basis. It's one of the reasons why the members of Moms Clean Air Force across this country have been stressing the importance of federal regulations to monitor uh, these types of activities. Over the past uh, five years, we, we saw back in 2017, 2018, and 2019 under the prior administration how chemical plant regulations and safety in just this type of emergency were really relaxed and the impacts of that were devastating. We look at Houston, Texas, Port Arthur, the Louisiana Gulf Coast area, um, Cancer Alley, where we see these types of activities happen more frequently than not. There is clearly, clearly a, um, a, a standard that we have to demand and that is that we should be protected from these types of emissions, types of fires, and that they're happening more frequently. And part of that has to do with us enforcing the rules and requiring our governments to do so. Are you familiar with what sort of chemicals were there at the chem tool plant and how they could impact people's health if they were to become hazardous conditions? Based upon what they have been saying, there's certainly some chemicals that are very concerning. Uh, and, and while we're looking at what the monitoring has been, uh, that they are putting monitoring in place to have a clear understanding of what these chemicals are, uh, it still needs to be um, considered on a often and regular basis. People who have asthma or are sensitive to uh, just how the air is shifting and changing, uh, whether or not they're moms who are concerned about whether or not their kids are going to be able to breathe the air outside just from playing ball, or if they're senior citizens who are on an oxygen tank. Uh, all of these are considerations that we have to take for the most sensitive and the most vulnerable upon us. And so while uh, certainly the air quality, as they're telling us right now, um, there don't seem to be any problems. But again, these are things that are very uh, important to constantly look at, constantly monitor and update 
And it is very important that we look at the most vulnerable populations when, when doing so. Uh, at the same time, I think one of the factors that we haven't talked about yet is what happens with our changing climate and extreme weather events? What happens if there are wind shifts or uh, as we see in the Gulf states when we see these types of chemical fires, extreme weather like hurricanes and floods, what happens in those cases, which we are seeing more often and hopefully and gratefully we don't see that in this situation. But, you know, this is not just a light one time, you know, we're going to come in and do some monitoring and everything will be okay. These are long term events that have to be studied, monitored, and I am hopeful that these air monitors that they are having in this community will be in place for quite some time to continue this monitoring and assuring the community that their air and their safety space. Their safety space. Officials do say that they are testing a one mile zone and monitoring the water again near the chemtool plant. They're hoping to actually get some results later today. If those results or any results in the future are concerning at all, what should people who are impacting do continue to see their doctor regularly or, or what what should they do? Continue to stay safe. The first priority is, you know, personal safety. I'm a mother, so I understand completely about um, wanting to know whether or not when your child walks outside that door, if they're breathing anything that uh, would be concerning to them. It's the summertime, people want to be outside. And quite frankly, we've all been put indoors as a result of COVID and we've been dealing with the impacts of that. So this is another stressor that is on families, but we have to stay safe. We have to ensure that we are protecting the most vulnerable among us. We have to ensure that if we need to make sure we're, we're wearing our masks, I highly recommend that, not just for COVID, but also for these types of incidents. And that we are um, checking and requiring that the um, chemical plant be held accountable and share public information. Again, I go back to that 2017 uh, to 2019 period where regulations were relaxed. Chemical plants did not have to share as much public information as originally planned under the Chemical Safety Act. And so that type of information can make or break a community's budget. I'm a former mayor. And so when you have to send out your firefighters, your police officers, uh, to something that they don't know what's in that building or they're not sure of how to respond, it puts the entire community at danger. It puts the city's budget at risk because this is overtime. These are men and women who are public servants and are going into situations where they don't know exactly what's the, what they're going to find. Fortunately, in this situation, we have not had a loss of life. But I have to tell you, Regina, and other places across this country, particularly in marginalized communities, we have seen loss of life as a result of acts like this. And it's very important that all of us stay on the same page to demand that it go no further. Ms. Tony, I knew that I recognized your name. You were mayor of what city? Greenville, Mississippi. <laughs> and did you have anything to do with the Obama administration? So I worked as regional administrator for EPA in the Southeast region. Uh, the Southeast region covers six states, uh, seven states and uh, six federally recognized tribes. And so it's a part of the country that unfortunately has seen this type of uh, chemical fire and right next to us in region six in the Louisiana area, Texas. Again, these are incidents that are way more frequent than we'd like to see, but there are ways that we can prevent them. There are accountability measures that must be enforced to ensure that we know what's in the plants, we are monitoring regularly, and that communities are well-funded to do the monitoring and understand exactly what they are next to so they can take the precautions necessary to keep our families safe. When we're talking about accountability, whose job is it? Is it the companies, the employees, the cities, the federal government, or everybody? It takes a combination of all of us. This administration has talked about an all of government approach, but there's also an all of community approach. These are places that can and should be able to operate in a way that is healthy for our communities. And uh, you know, we have to hold the, the uh, corporations accountable for what not only what they are putting in communities, but the exposure and telling us what's in these communities. 
Uh, when we have a all of community approach, it means that we are all well informed, we are well prepared, and we understand not only the risk, but we are preparing ourselves to mitigate and even reduce that because it should not exist at all. We should not be in a position where we are afraid to go outside, afraid to send our friends and family, our spouses and partners to work for the police or the fire department when they don't know exactly what they will be facing going into these buildings, particularly as they could be extremely dangerous, not just for that incident, but for their health and welfare down the road. In 20 or 30 years, having ingested some type of potential carcinogen, these are the types of impacts that we're seeing today from a lack of actions 20 and 30 years ago. There's no need to repeat that type of history. So all of us working together, both in our communities, our local and state governments, but also through this administration's all of government approach, focusing on climate and resiliency efforts, particularly in marginalized communities, but especially in a way for us to prepare moving forward to be more resilient and create uh, wealth in our communities through economic development and jobs and healthy communities. So all of us, I think, are a bit responsible to be aware of what's happening, what's going on, and at the same time, we have to hold people accountable. All right, Climate Justice Liaison, Environmental Defense Fund, and Senior Advisor to Moms Clean Air Force, Heather McTeer. Tony, thank you so much for joining us live this morning on News Now from Fox. Thanks so much for having me. Back out to